In the event that the screen will not turn on, check the power cable is properly plugged into the back of the system and that the plug is properly inserted into the electric socket, the wall and switched on. If the screen still will not switch on, then one or more of the fuses located above the power cable socket may have failed and will need replacing. To do this, ensure that the system is switched off, remove the power cable and, using a screwdriver, carefully remove the fuse casing from the back of the system. Both fuses should be replaced with new 2.5 amp, 5 by 20 mm, 110 slash 250 volt fuses. And, once secure, the fuse case can be inserted back into the system and clicked into place. Spare fuses are supplied with the system or can easily be sourced. Reinsert the power cable and turn on the green on-off switch, which should now light up and the screen should now start. During the auto checking process, audible and visual alarms with an indication of corrective action will appear if the system detects a problem. If the machine is reporting that the temperature probe is not connected, ensure that the blue temperature probe cable is fully inserted into the port and that the connection to the disposable kit is in place. If the pressure sensor alarm is activated, make sure the grey pressure sensor cable has been correctly aligned and inserted into the lower port and that it is securely attached to the connector on the disposable kit. Next, once the silicon tubing is fed into the peristaltic pump, the pump lid needs to be closed. The start button and device ready will only appear when the corrective actions have been implemented. An alarm sounds if the fluid temperature drops 2 degrees below the set temperature. The alarm can be muted by pressing the mute button. Red warning text appears asking to check the disposable kit and reposition the catheter. The methods for doing this will be discussed in the following sections. Once corrective action has taken place, the temperature will steadily increase to the set value. In the event of the temperature exceeding 2 degrees Celsius above the set temperature, an audible alarm will be activated. The treatment cycle will continue and the system will automatically regulate to achieve its set temperature. The alarm will stop when the temperature has reduced. Enhanced safety features ensure that the system will automatically cut power if it continues to operate for 2 minutes above 45 degrees, 30 seconds above 48 degrees or if it reaches 51 degrees. If the system stops, follow the advice on checking the kit, especially the connections of the temperature cable and heating plate. If the temperature does not quickly restabilise, switch off the machine and call your combat representative. A common cause of a short term change in temperature is air on the sensor. Check for any air bubbles around the tip of the temperature probe located just before the red drainage port. If any bubbles are present, then they may be dislodged by tapping gently with your fingertip. If the patient experiences no discomfort during this time, then no further action is required and the temperature will stabilise quickly. If a low pressure alarm is detected, the system will alarm and reverse the peristaltic pump in order to remove the blockage. The pump will begin again slowly before reaching full speed. The pump will perform this action three times before stopping. If the pump has not cleared the obstruction, the following sections give advice on repositioning and clearing the catheter and adding fluid to the bladder. If the pressure sensor detects high pressure due to an obstruction in the tubing, the pressure bar will move from green through yellow to red. The alarm will sound and the pump will stop. Check both stopcocks are in the correct positions and that the inline clamps are open. Check the tubing, especially in and around the pumps for kinks or blockages causing an obstruction. Issues are most commonly caused by having the clamps closed or the stopcocks in the wrong position. Check that the clamps are open. Ensure that the blue stopcock is open to the patient, open to the system and closed to the syringe. The red stopcock should also be open to the patient and the system and closed to the drainage bag. This is the recirculation position. If the recirculation stops, sometimes after a clucking sound has been heard, additional fluid can be added to the system to aid the flow. One problem this can solve is an obstruction in the catheter. To do this, pause the treatment using the touch screen. Fill a Lue Lock syringe with 20 mL of fluid and attach to the blue installation port.
turn the blue stopcock so that it is open to the syringe and open to the bladder and closed to the system. Instill the fluid with moderate pressure directly into the bladder. The objective is to remove any debris and clots that have settled in the catheter tip. If possible, remove this additional fluid, although a larger circulating volume may also help with better recirculation as seen in the next section. It must be noted though that this will cause additional dilution of the drug. Return the stopcock to the recirculation position, remove the syringe and replace the cap. The treatment can then be restarted. Occasionally air may be seen circulating in the tubing when the pump is on. Pause the treatment and check that the stopcocks are in the recirculation position. If they are open to the lure fittings, air may enter the system. If the patient has a large bladder, it may not be filled with fluid and the tip of the catheter may not be submerged. To correct this, connect a Lewy lock syringe filled with 40 mL of fluid to the blue installation port. Turning the three-way stopcock as shown, add 10 mL into the bladder. Turn the blue stopcock back to the recirculation position and restart the treatment. You may repeat this stage three further times to a maximum of 40 ml of added fluid if necessary. If there has been air in the system, it will collect in the bubble trap. To remove this, attach a Lewy lock syringe to the blue port by pressing down and twisting at the same time and gently drain the air until the chamber is full of fluid. If none of these steps have improved the flow and the clucking sound continues, or the pump keeps stopping, then it may be necessary to reposition the catheter. The catheter tip may be embedded in the bladder wall, inserted too deeply and bent over, or not inserted fully enough. This usually occurs during the test recirculation and the catheter can be manipulated with no risk of exposure to chemotherapy. If this occurs once chemotherapy has been administered, follow your centre's advice. Stop the treatment and deflate the balloon. Partially withdraw the catheter by one third to one half of its length and rotate it at least a quarter of a turn. Gently re-advance it and re-inflate the balloon. Once completed, restart the treatment by pressing the resume treatment button. Should the patient complain of urgency, some fluid can be removed from the system. Pause the treatment and open the red stopcock so that it is open to the system, open to the waste bag and closed to the catheter. Restart circulation and then, after the desired amount of fluid has been removed, return the red stopcock to the recirculation position and resume treatment. This completes the troubleshooting guide.